Some 62 nations and organisations took part in the second international humanitarian pledging conference for Syria, along with 14 UN agencies of various relief functions and four regional organisations. Kuwait's role was to prepare for the conference, but it has done much more than that by setting an example and a precedent for the world to follow. Sarah Glubb has this report. Representatives from around 70 countries and organizations gathered for the second International Humanitarian Pledging Conference for Syria in Kuwait in an effort to bring together as many partners as possible to pledge their commitment in response to a call by His Highness the Emir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah. I think this is uh, extremely important and uh, that is why I uh, uh, thanked uh, most, uh, I would say sincerely, uh, His Highness uh, uh, the Sheikh Vimir because it's extremely important that uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, moment before the Geneva Conference next week, uh, uh, this very strong commitment on behalf of the international community. Uh, it uh, uh, testifies to the leadership of His Highness the Emir uh, in these difficult times of saving lives, of uh, providing humanitarian assistance uh, uh, as he said uh, to uh, all the uh, uh, Syrians uh, which suffer uh, this terrible conflict and it is also I believe a test for the international community uh, to show solidarity and to, to live up to the commitments and to the values of human life uh, for human rights um, uh, I, I think it is important also because we put with all the, uh, I would say, the responsibility uh, issues uh, uh, like uh, uh, providing children with education and for us, for UNESCO, this is particularly important. It speaks about uh, the ending of violence, uh, a violence sometimes uh, increasingly gender-based. Uh, uh, we speak about uh, values, uh, uh, we speak about uh, human dignity uh, and also I think it's important because it's uh, uh, this conference uh, demonstrates a solidarity with the neighboring countries uh, and uh, uh, those countries which suffer the burden of accepting uh, uh, almost four million Syrian refugees. I think it conveys a very important message. One, the issue of sustainability. The refugee problem is a very complicated problem. Even if we were to achieve a political resolution to the Syrian crisis, which is still far-fetched, but even if we were to achieve that, this crisis will continue, the refugee problem will continue for years. Returning the refugees back to Syria will take time. Building the infrastructure in Syria will take time. And the numbers that exist outside of Syria are really very large. So the fact that one country, Kuwait, would host the, con the conference the first year and then again is a message that we need to work together medium and long term. This is not a one event uh, issue. Secondly, Kuwait for the second time in two years has, provide, has announced a substantial contribution. Last year 300 million, this year 500 million more. The, uh, his, his Highness the Emir announced that. Uh, that creates a, a momentum for other countries to respond in kind. Minister of State for Cabinet Affairs, Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah Sabah, said that they all felt a sense of pride when UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon referred to His Highness the Emir as a hero of international humanitarian work. Uh, this is an extraordinarily important initiative and we're very grateful to the Emir and to Kuwait both for hosting the conference for two years in a row, but also for starting off with an extremely generous $500 million pledge that really sets the tone for how serious this crisis is and how important it is for the entire world to step forward with a significant contribution in the face of the humanitarian disaster. Um, I am very grateful to uh, the Emir of Kuwait and the government of Kuwait and the people of Kuwait uh, for bringing us a second year in, uh, in, uh, in a row. I pray that next time when Kuwait calls a conference it would be on the reconstruction of, uh, of Syria and not anymore on the humanitarian tragedy. What it has done is not only to raise substantial amount of funds. Uh, last year, $1.5 billion uh, uh, led to saving lives and reducing suff suffering of millions of people. Uh, and this year, I'm confident that we will exceed significantly the pledge from last year. We uh, from Europe have pledged uh, uh, a total of $753 million. Uh, 
the European Union member states and the European Commission together. The share of the European Commission I'm responsible for is $225 million. But in addition to the money, what this conference does is to build the foundation of solidarity and the political will to bring an end to the conflict through negotiations. And in this sense, invaluable is what Kuwait does for the Syrian people, for their neighbors, and for the whole world. Through the wise leadership of His Highness the Emir, the state of Kuwait will continue its duty towards its Arab brothers and sisters and will always extend its arm to any nation that may require humanitarian assistance. This is the second year in a row that the state of Kuwait is hosting the International Humanitarian Pledging Conference for Syria with the main aim of helping the Syrian refugees and the displaced, which currently amount to over 9 million. However, this conference is not just about money and numbers and has proved to be a catalyst that unites all countries and NGOs under one roof to further the pursuit of solving the catastrophic crisis in Syria. From Bayan Palace, this is Sarah Glub reporting for English News.